Welcome back. This video explains the basic of hand tracking, which is now in the Advanced Framework Core 4.1, a fully fleshed out feature. So please don't forget to upgrade your Advanced Framework Core to the 4.1 version if you want to use hand tracking in your application. In this first video, I will show you how to modify your pawn, motion controllers and some other components of your project to make it fit for hand tracking. Up until now, the only VR headsets which support hand tracking are the Oculus Quest HMDs. So you will need one of them to use hand tracking. You also need to enable hand tracking in the menu of your HMD. You do that uh, by going into the Quest menu and open the settings. You find the settings you want under Devices and Hand and Controllers. Just make sure you have that set up before you start testing hand tracking in your project. Now for the setup in the Advanced Framework itself. It requires a few steps which I detailed here on the right side. If you set up hand tracking for the first time, please have a look at all of them so you don't run into avoidable errors. First, let's go to the VR Pawn Parent class. You will find it under Blueprints, Pawn and VR. Open the BP v Pawn VR and have a look at the hand tracking section of the variables. There you find the boolean Allow Hand Tracking. By default it's set to false because we experienced crashes if it was set to true and no HMT supporting hand tracking was attached. Let's set it to true now and also have a short look at where it's used. As you can see it ensures that hand tracking motion controllers are spawned for the pawn and hand tracking is enabled. In this function it also checks for the HMD. This enum is used in the game instance to define the currently detected headset. Let's have a short look. This function is called upon startup when a VR headset is detected. As you can see, it gets the device name and additional information if necessary and sets the HMD enum accordingly. Up here you can see that the Oculus Quest 1 and 2 as well as the Quest Link all lead to the same entry, which is the one the pawn checked for. Let's get back on track. Now go to the VR pawn you are using in your level. Please do not use any of the parent classes here for that. They merely serve to consolidate shared functions and variables. Here we are. The place we want to go to is the controls component, which should be on any VR pawn. The controls component has mainly two sections which are relevant for hand tracking. Up at the top you have the hand tracking motion controllers. Make sure to enter a motion controller of the type BP motion controller hands tracking for each hand. Now let's go to the hand tracking function map down here. As you can see, here we need a new type of data asset. The gesture data asset here describes one gesture using requirements for finger positions and hand position. I personally think it's very straightforward. Still, we have a video featuring it in all detail. Have a look at the description if you want more insight on that. The function map here merges each gesture with, with a controller function and basically replaces the preset data asset we use for standard VR controls. Why is there still a hand tracking preset directly below, you might ask? Let's open it up and see. As you can see, it's practically empty. The only entries of interest are the teleport settings here. Combining teleport and hand tracking is a tricky task under the best circumstances. But as a basis, it's absolutely necessary to get rid of any teleport settings which use the thumbstick or any specific button inputs because we do not have these inputs in hand tracking. Let's have a look at the motion controllers next. You find them under Blueprints, VR and Motion Controllers. The framework again provides a parent class and then two child classes, one for each hand. Let's have a look at the parent first. Here we have the gesture debug boolean in the debug variables section. It activates a text render which informs you on the currently detected gestures. It was very useful in the gesture PDA video to test the gestures I defined. So what does the controller actually look like? For that, let's go to one of the child actors. Here we have the mesh and a number of motion components in place. As you can see, we use the Oculus hand as a representation, which gives you a few adjustments regarding look and behavior. You find those on the Oculus hand under hand properties. Make sure these two variables up here are set to the side you intend to make a controller for. The confidence behavior defines what happens if the headset loses track of the player's hand and the material override allows you to change the hand color, etc. Finally, let me call your attention to an important setting for the building your application. In the project settings under plugins, you find the Oculus VR plugin. Here you have a hand tracking support setting. 
It's usually set to controllers only. And as long as you are testing your project, using the Oculus Link it won't matter. But before building you need to set it to controllers and hand or hands only. Please make sure not to miss that, because if you do, hand tracking will not work in your build, although everything worked perfectly in your project. With all that enabled, your application can change automatically from controllers to hand tracking if no controllers are detected or the player puts down the controllers like this. That's all for now. Please have a look at our additional videos if you want to learn more about hand tracking. See you there. Bye bye.